Hello students, welcome to the first session of Foundations of Behavior, an introductory course of undergraduate psychology program. The first unit you will be learning is psychology and its perspectives. Are you all ready to uncover the secrets of mind? Let's make an attempt together, shall we? Starting with understanding what is psychology. Have you had questions like why some people give up easily while some are persistent? Have you wondered why do we like to be with people or otherwise? What happens when you fall asleep? Is it possible to read someone's thoughts or to put it blatantly, can psychologists read mind? Psychology may have answers to such questions and more. Psychology not only helps us understand why other people do the things they do, but it also helps us better understand ourselves and our reactions to other people. Let's start with a definition of psychology. Psychology is the scientific study of behavior and mental processes. When we use the term behavior, we not only refer to overt or observable behavior, say like a person in action, doing something like reading, writing, talking, walking, sitting, working, cooking, driving, but also covert behavior like a person sleeping. Sleeping is also a behavior. A person who is not responding to a question is also behaving. An active person sitting idly is also showing withdrawn behavior. Therefore, behavior is not just limited to observable action made by people. Behavior and mental processes includes not just what people do but also internal processes like perceptions, emotions, thinking, memory and so on. Psychology is scientific in nature because it relies on empirical methods and follows a systematic approach to analyze behavior rather than basing its findings on mere intuitions or guesses or the researcher's individual experiences. Have you heard the saying? Birds of same feather flock together? Then you must have also heard opposites attract. Then which one is true? Careful scientific research, careful scientific investigation in psychology reveals us such answers. Every field has its goals. The goals of psychology are to describe, understand, predict and change or modify behavior. The first goal, describe, description. The first step in understanding anything is to describe what it is. Description involves observing behavior and answering questions like what is happening, where it happens, to whom it happens and under what circumstances. For example, telling someone has sleep problems is not enough. You have to indicate whether the person finds it difficult to fall asleep or does the person find it difficult to remain asleep? Does he or she keep waking up in the middle of the night? Does the person have nightmares or any other disturbances? Is the person sleeping during daytime? Etc. This gives a clear picture of the behavior. The next step is to understand the behavior by explaining the reason behind it why a person is behaving in a certain way continuing with the previous example you might try and explain the inability to fall asleep as due to 
various reasons it could be as simple as the person having a cup of coffee at night time which is disturbing his sleep various other reasons could be person's work schedule hormonal changes life problems etc better understanding of the problem helps us to solve the mystery behind it and importantly shows us the direction of what can be done to address the issue while understanding the problem might be surface level description explains the behavior and we can identify the root cause once the root cause is understood we can easily solve the problematic behavior unless and until the root cause is found out whatever actions are taken could only be symptomatic relief the next goal of psychology is to predict prediction determining what will happen in the future based on the understanding of a person's particular condition you may be able to predict how a person will behave in a particular situation you can predict that the person with sleep problem might experience stress the person might be deemed lazy and sluggish by others the person might come off as being irritated agitated angry at all the times person may be tired unable to do his or her work it could lead to some medical problems health issues it can lead to accidents even workplace accidents so understanding what will happen is also important prediction plays an important role it can help us to control the behavior one major goal of psychology is to bring changes changes to the betterment of a person's life just understanding what happens why it happens and what may happen without having any control over behavior is not beneficial behaviors may change over time but most of the time we may be in need of changing changing a behavior which may be destructive which is causing damage inability etc the change can be brought through behavioral modification techniques counseling and other methods the modification of the behavior is oriented towards bringing success in a person's life or even simple happiness these are the four major goals of psychology to describe to understand to predict and to modify behavior in order to understand any topic or a subject it's important to understand the foundations so let's start with the roots of psychology the term psychology is derived from the greek word psyche which means soul in the past psychology was considered as study of soul but then because of the abstract nature of the word soul and the different interpretations it has that idea was dropped it was replaced with study of mind even mind is an abstract concept very difficult to understand therefore even this was replaced and currently we refer to psychology as the study of behavior and mental processes
The field of psychology has its origins in philosophy, where the major fundamental questions were about knowledge, mind, existence, purpose of life, etc. Psychology emerged out of philosophy when the questions raised were started to be studied scientifically rather than from a subjective perspective. Psychology as a scientific discipline was strengthened by many important historical milestones in the field. One major such event was when the first psychological experimental laboratory was established in the late 19th century by Wilhelm Wundt. Major theories within psychology are represented by the different schools of psychology. Before, the psychologists used to adhere to single school of thought and were ardent followers of that particular school. Now, psychologists have a holistic perspective of psychology and draw on ideas from different theories. Some of the schools of thoughts in psychology are Structuralism, Functionalism, Restored Psychology, Behaviorism, Psychodynamic, Cognitive, Humanistic. Let's learn about Structuralism first. Structuralism Wilhelm Wundt was a physiologist. He wanted to study human mind by applying scientific principles. He set up his laboratory in 1879 in Leipzig, Germany. It was set up to study psychological phenomena, specifically the building blocks of the mind. According to him, psychology is the study of conscious mind. He believed that Every experience could be broken down into its individual components like emotions and sensations. Wundt's perspective, known as structuralism, focuses on uncovering the fundamental mental components of perception, consciousness, thinking, emotions and other kinds of mental states and activities. Wundt and other structuralists like Tischner used a procedure called introspection to understand the structure of the mind. Introspection is the examination of one's own conscious thoughts and feelings. In introspection method, participants describe in their own words in as much detail as possible what they experience. For example, say the participants would be given an object, maybe a pen, and they would be asked to describe that object. They are not required to name the object as this is a pen, this is used for writing. Rather, they have to tell what they feel what they think, what is going on inside their mind when the object is presented. This is an example for introspection in its simplest form. Structuralism was not free of drawbacks. The assumption that introspection reveals the structure of the mind itself was not satisfactory. Introspection is not a scientific technique as subjective experiences couldn't be tested and confirmed. It is difficult to explain complex inner experiences like emotions. Critics believe that studying consciousness is like trying to study the wind. Conscious ideas are constantly flowing in an ever-changing stream. How? As the saying goes, you cannot step into the same river twice. Catching the exact stream of conscious thoughts is also not possible. 
The next school of thought we have is functionalism. It is the perspective that replaced structuralism. Rather than focusing on the mind's structure, functionalism concentrated on what the mind does, how behavior functions and what role behavior plays in allowing people to adapt to their environments. While structuralism is concerned with contents, functionalism is concerned with process or mental operations. The major proponents of functionalism were Thorndike, William James, John Dewey, etc. Functionalists examined how behavior allows people to satisfy their needs and how our stream of consciousness permits us to adapt to our environment. Unlike structuralists, functionalists focused on how the mind allows people to function in the real world, how people work, play and adapt to their surroundings. One major advantage of functionalism is its application to real life problems like education, mental health, etc. One can find elements of functionalism even in the modern fields of educational psychology and industrial organizational psychology as well as in other areas of psychology. Functionalism is criticized for not using controlled experiments and its least predictive ability. That's it for the present session. In the coming sessions, you will learn about the other schools of thoughts of psychology. Until then, bye, take care, thanks for watching.